we've got a serious story and a serious message today, which is fitting for this gospel. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world but forfeit his life? Keep that one verse of Jesus' words in your mind for now, because they're the key to understanding everything else I'm about to say. We're talking about gaining the whole world at far too high a price. I have a friend uh, of the Anabaptist tradition. Uh, she's working on her PhD for theology. Uh, we served in the hospital together three years ago as chaplains. And she told me that in her church, uh, a pastor or a preacher should talk about domestic abuse to their church at least once a year. That was three years ago, so this is a long time coming. And abuse is actually a pretty easy word to define. To abuse is to use wrongly. To treat in a harmful or offensive manner. So, domestic abuse is simply being hurtful or harmful to those closest to us. Okay? Hitting your younger brother counts. But also, saying something really mean is just as truly abuse. That phrase of Christ's, what profit would there be for a man to gain his, the entire world and forfeit his life? Let's change one letter. What profit would there be for a man to gain the entire world but forfeit his wife? What if all of our gains come at the expense of those closest to us? Is that not just as bad? Is it just as crippling to fracture the relationships that are the closest and most intimate in our lives? I think so. And I can back it up with history. There was a period of Korean history we remember as the Joseon Dynasty. Uh, it might be pronounced Chosian Dynasty, Either way, it's spelled with a J. It was about 500 years long, 1312 to 1910, give or take. And this dynasty had this regressive social program. As the years and the decades went by, less and less dignity and fewer and fewer rights were afforded to women. Terrible time to be a woman in Korea. And to be clear, this is not something of the ancient past. This is not dissimilar from China today. We're talking about a culture that, for a time at least, honored men, but did not honor women. Women were not permitted to read and write, although some learned on their own. If a couple had trouble conceiving, it was obviously the woman's fault. Obviously, the women couldn't inherit any property or anything else from their families. And this was all done on the premise that everyone had their place in society. And the best thing you could do for your country is to gracefully accept your lot in life. So women were expected to accept the idea that they were less than men. Well, near the end, this program turned its own culture into this stratified, stagnant, rotting mockery of the Confucian ideal culture. It's worth mentioning that I didn't go out and search out this information. It sort of fell into my lap one day, and my jaw dropped as I read it. Uh, and in fact, I cried myself to sleep that night, which I do not often do. It was traumatic just to realize that this was a thing that actually happened. So why am I telling all of you? Taken at face value, this story doesn't really have much merit. 
Obviously, if you have a daughter and you don't want her to learn to read and write, I probably have most of your attention. Likewise, those of you that care about Korean history are probably pretty interested right now, but what about the rest of you? Well, I'm sharing this because it's a very specific example of a universal problem. When we start declaring that other people are somehow less human than us, bad things happen. Every time. Every single time. And this is not something that happens on the other side of the world alone. I'll remind you that in America, not that long ago, we declared that slaves were representable as three-fifths of a free person. That is ridiculously absurd to say nothing of the slavery itself, which we don't have time for today. I could also remind you of the Trail of Tears in 1830, where we purged every Native American east of the Mississippi River, as if the European settlers had more right to live there. We threw them out of their homes for their own good. The words of President Andrew Jackson, progress required moving forward. Never mind the death toll, never mind the simple injustice of throwing a person out of their home. Progress required moving forward. Well, you know what I think of that? Kids, cover your ears. Go ahead, cover your ears. It's a bunch of hogwash. All right, you, you can listen again now. We don't need to be a president or a slave owner or a Korean nobleman to act like this. We can be sinful right here at home. All we have to do is always put ourselves before other people. All we have to do is really believe that other people are somehow less than us. And bad things happen. Back to that Korean dynasty I was talking about. All those men that had all the power and the honor and everything that life could give them, you know how they lived? They spent their entire lives controlling and manipulating the king and the ruling body of the country. They were locked in a perpetual struggle for corrupt power. And no one can win that game for long. And those men lived desperate, paranoid lives because they could lose everything at the drop of a hat. And that's what happens when you live your life without a scrap of respect for other people. And when you surround yourself with people that have no respect. You enter this cutthroat life the most greedy and self-centered parts of you come out. You become a monster. You surround yourself with other monsters. And that brings us right back to the gospel message. What is the point of gaining the entire world and forfeiting your life in the process? Because you know what? There are a lot of ways you can forfeit your life. Oh, sure, there are obvious ways. Uh, drugs, violence, and hatred will do it pretty much every time. But what about never seeing another human being as equal to yourself, or even superior to yourself? To go your entire life seeing your girlfriend or your wife as a tool or a servant? Wouldn't the loneliness crush you every night? Or what about going your entire career without trusting someone for fear of being stabbed in the back. How could you live like that and actually think you're happy? We need one another. People need people. I'm sure you've heard that before. But go a step farther. People need people we can't order around. We need people that we that are capable of saying no to us from time to time to keep us humble. We need people to suffer for and to nurture because it's only then that we really become our true selves. It's only then do we rise above 
these power plays the world somehow wants us to be involved in. It's only then that we follow after Christ and take up our cross. In honesty, I feel a little bad about this homily because we have a baptism today. (laughs) Not the most complimentary messages. So as a final remark, I want to remind most of all the family, but the entire church, what's happening today is the opposite of my cautionary tale. For the first formal time, you're going to be sharing your faith with your child. And all of us will be welcoming him as a son, as a member of our community in faith and love. And so today is absolutely a day to be joyful and to celebrate and to renew our faith in one another. So please, don't forget that today.